Hi, and welcome back to the Dr. Ramsey Show. Today, I want to share with you something current, something that was published in the New York Times about menopause. So I'm going to read it to you. I'll interject here and there, but I found it quite interesting, mainly because I've been practice, practicing hormone replacement therapy since 1997. And this is like a brand new look at menopause. And so I wanted to really share this with you. So it's in the New York Times dated December 20th. Welcome to the menopause gold rush. Venture capitalists, former magazine editors, and Goop have all converged on the new frontier in women's wellness. Whenever a thing is known by euphemism, it's probably a thing that makes people squirm. Long has this been the case with menopause or the change, which is typically spoken in a whisper with an air of tragedy or a joke about a sweaty lady with frizzy hair wailing about something, probably her inevitable slide into irrelevance. Menopause has been historically been treated as a way of say saying not dead, exactly, but part dead for sure. Women have been going through menopause and its assorted difficulties since forever. Only recently, however, did the fact of life become a lucrative consumer category. We're in the middle of menopause gold rush. This market is flooding with high profile, well-funded menopause related beauty products and telemedicine startups, as well as a growing roster of celebrities willing to admit it's happening to them. There's a, there's the potential not only for a big cultural shift to happen, but for some number of people to profit off of it. I want to remind you that treating menopausal women is serving women, helping women live more fulfilling, happier lives. It's not a profit center, but they're making it one around the country, which actually is better than nothing. Cause there's a lot of women who don't have access to hormone replacement therapy. And I believe this platform will make it that way. More on that later. After all, women are living longer than ever and have taken unprecedented steps to spend those extra years in excellent health. Has any previous generation in history of women done quite so many squats, consumed so many good fats, sworn off so much bread, moisturized with such intensity and care? Generation trickle up. Modern, modern menopause can be a long and dynamic slug of time. I don't know why they say modern. Menopause, like they said, has been going forever. It comes in three stages. These are not correct. I'm going to read them to you and I'll tell you what's correct. It says perimenopause, which typically begins in one's mid to late forties when the ovary slow production and estrogen levels begin to dip. Perimenopause can last as long as 10 years and can cause an enormous range of symptoms from mood swings, headaches, hot flashes, and vaginal dryness. Next up is menopause, the moment one year after the last menstruation. Then there's postmenopause, which is the period of free uh, period free rest of your life when the risk of heart disease and osteoporosis and pretty much everything else shoots way up. Well, the three stages of a woman's life is um, premenopause, that's a fertile woman, perimenopause, which is a woman who hobulates haphazardly and menstruates haphazardly, and then there's menopause when we don't menstruate, menstruates, pause. So there's not a post, like menopause is no menstruation. So it's pre, peri, and post. They skipped pre before 40. Um, which is fine. I just wanted you to know the truth about women's uh, stages. Gen Z daughters are profoundly frank when it comes to their ever-evolving bodies. They would never call their period being on the rag or good or God forbid the curse. They have period underpants marketed for slumber parties, tampons that come in adorable wrappers, first period kits that include hot water bottles and con conversation starter setup of cards for discussing the milestone with adults in their lives. How pathetic would it be for their mothers to be so embarrassed of their own hormonal shifts? Call it generational trickle up, which is interesting because I have a lot of women 20 to 40 that are daughters of the moms that I treat for their menstruation because they don't want to be on the birth control because they know how bad it is for their gut and their immune system. So it's, I'm seeing a lot of younger women now 
before I saw mostly menopausal and andropausal men. As a result of, or maybe as a precursor to, these changes in attitude discussing menopause is no longer taboo, thank God. I'm going through perimenopause at the moment, says Tracy Ellis Ross. It really is frying my brain. In a 2020 episode of her podcast, Michelle Obama described a hot flashy experience as being like somebody put a furnace in my core and turned it on high. I hear this all the time. Uh, Drew Barrymore remarked on her show that menopause had her feeling like she was filled either with cortisol or cottage cheese. <laughs> Erica Badu posted a video of herself on Instagram with a caption that read in part, peace, peace, I'm 51. Let's talk about the flowering of menopause. The comedian Jill Kargman said she loved being in a room with hundreds of women who could commiserate with the particular challenges of middle age. It's no accident that this is coming at the time when the exceedingly narrow confines of beauty are beginning to stretch. Race and size are becoming more diverse in fashion, so why not age better too? I've been saying this since 1997 um, or 98. I forget the year I met my teacher. It was right after I graduated. Popular models of 1990, Amber Vallada, Christy Turlington, Carolyn Murphy, are experiencing career longevity that models never dared imagine before. Older women have begun appearing in ad campaigns and on runways. Aging no longer requires that a woman either accepts her invisibility, shrouded in Eileen Fisher, or desperately tried to appear forever 28. Like all new wellness categories like sex toys, for instance, which are now marketed as a self-care option, it's an investment category for a group with specific underserved needs and a lot of money. A new category of health. The new menopause economy divides neatly along medical versus beauty lines. The telemedicine startups deal largely in the prescribing of hormone replacement therapies using a business model that has found success in other sectors. Hims and Hers Health, for example, which use telemedicine to prescribe generic versions of Rogaine, Viagra, and a range of antidepressants, birth controls, and other medications on gender-specific sites, has a market capitalization of more than $1 billion. The drugs... The companies sell are generic versions of the name brand and the company gets the profit. Subscription models are famously lucrative as subscribers often fail to unsubscribe even when the need has not been met. So I think this will be the last paragraph I read. There's a lot more. If you want to get the New York Times dated December 20th, you can, but I want to just finish this one paragraph. But HRT, hormone replacement therapy, is a complicated issue. No, it's not. After a large study in 2002, which I've shared with you before many times, it was determined that the risks of HRT were greater than the potential upsides. That was the WHI, the Women's Health Initiative. Further studies found that many of those concerns were overblown, not applicable to populations who might fight benefit from hormone therapy, but many women and doctors were scared off and have stayed that way. According to a women's health expert at Mayo Clinic and the medical doc director of North American Menopause Society, or NAMS, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more, the current official position is that benefits of hormone therapy typically outweigh the risks for most healthy, asymptomatic women under 60 within 10 years of menopause. It should be prescribed by a doctor educated in menopause management. However, OBGYNs get about one to two hours of instruction on menopausal care when surveyed. So what's interesting about this, I want to talk about NAMS. Um, this is the first time, so I have their 2020 position paper. This is North American Menopause Society. They make all of the standards of care for menopause treatments. And they're saying that you have to be within the range of 60 or less to receive hormones, and that's where the benefits outweigh the risks. But um, in 2012, NAMS first put progesterone on the map. Like, so progesterone's been around since years. The first article was 1980 something that I remember was a huge article, but 2012 was the first time they put progesterone on the map and a very low dose. Um, now they're saying benefits outweigh the risk before they were saying risks outweigh the benefits. So we're making some progress for sure. Absolutely. For sure. Um, women 
demand feeling better, especially in their aging process. And of course we do that. That's what we do as a practice. And now it's making news. It's making headlines as if it's something new and it's not, but it's wonderful. Women don't have to suffer from hot flashes and vaginal dryness and painful intercourse and losing their memory, um, developing Alzheimer's, heart disease, colon cancer, and breast cancer. We don't have to. Do we eliminate all risks? Absolutely not. Do we reduce them significantly? Absolutely yes. And so I'm grateful that it's making um, the news because it's better than nothing. And I want to share lastly that last week I met this woman, beautiful, beautiful woman. A few of her neighbors see me I, and they're all wonderful women. Um, here she is, this beautiful woman that doesn't want to have sex. She can't lose weight. She can sleep. She's developing anxiety and she's gone to her gynecology. She's gone to other doctors and they give her antidepressants, which is what I looked on the website of this um, hormone group. And one of the things they're giving is antidepressants. That's what came out of the 2002 WHI article is instead of hormones, give women an antidepressant and they won't know that they feel so bad. So here's this beautiful woman. I'm so excited to treat her because I know she's going to feel better in the matter of weeks. It's not going to take long. It never takes long. Um, there are no risks. There's only side effects. So I'm really grateful to share this with you. Again, New York Times, December 20th, if you want to read the entire article. And thank you all for trusting me for all of these years in treating you. It is truly my pleasure. And I'd like to reach more people with telemedicine. So now because of this article, we're going to find new ways of marketing and new ways of um, caring for you. I already have two new doctors starting in May. I'd like to have more. If anybody wants to invest to help me grow faster, great. But um, I do want to thank all of you for trusting me and for coming back every year for your refills and feeling the best that you can. Share this with as many women as you can. And thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.